Moving on to the alternate slate of electors. Uh, of course, we're going to talk about that. And I know you've said publicly that it's a non-issue what is. happened with the slate of electors and your involvement. I, no, I, I, I virtually, you can't, I had no involvement. I received either three texts and I sent two texts or the other way around. I mean, my invol you know, my, my lack of involvement was seconds worth of texting. But that's still I, involvement. But, but I didn't even know, I was, te I was texted that, so there had something had to be delivered to the vice president. I didn't know what it was, and was there somebody that could help arrange delivery? So then I text, then I talked to my chief of staff, and he took care of it. We found out that the vice president wasn't accepting anything. He said can't deliver anything. That was the end of story. But if he would have said can, yes, you can't, you can't you can't call that involvement. But if he would have said yes, go ahead and deliver it, even though you didn't know I what didn't, it was. You know, what, what, what would you do if you get a call? If you get a call from the president of the United States lawyer. Wanting to get something to the vice president, but you didn't know what didn't know. it was. Again, you've wouldn't got you you've got wouldn't you want to got, inquire what got, something is to hand to the vice president of the United States during such a critical anything. time? I didn't hand anything to the president. I wasn't involved. But if I you would have said I sure, wasn't I wasn't involved. You can make it seem I wasn't involved. A couple of texts, a, a few seconds of my time. I couldn't couldn't even remember what my you know. What, what I had done, which is why it took a little while to piece it all together, but you know, we pieced it all together. I, I received three texts and I sent two, or vice versa. Was Sean Riley working rogue? Did he go rogue? Was he working on no, his he, own? He was my new chief of staff. He'd worked for me earlier. He'd been in the White House. He knew these people. Somebody was asking him to arrange a delivery of something to the vice president. He contacted the people that he knew for the vice president and said, we're not accepting anything. End of story. So he knew what he was doing, even though no one knew what that thing was. There, we, did, we weren't doing anything. We were just, was, were we supposed to deliver something or not? Did the vice president want it? The vice president didn't. We didn't deliver anything. If you're, it's, I mean, it's, it's a complete non -story. I know the news media is trying to turn it into a story. I know the January 6th committee tried to turn it into a story. They didn't do their due diligence. They didn't, by the way, publish the full text exchange, which shows the vice president was expecting this. It was supposed to be delivered some other way. If you're subpoenaed, would you testify? That's speculative. There's nothing to subpoena me about. But if you were, would you testify? Listen, I would, I would probably honor subpoena, sure. You just watched Republican Senator Ron Johnson get grilled by a local reporter out of Wisconsin from NBC 26. And that was really great to watch. As you saw there, he was squirming the entire time. He was incredibly uncomfortable. If you look at his body language, not that I'm a body language expert, uh, if you look at his body language, he wanted to deflect as quickly as he possibly could. He, he couldn't handle having to answer these questions because he's implicated. No matter how minimal his involvement was, he is now officially implicated in the plot to overturn a Democratic presidential election. That is no small thing. But the reporter did a phenomenal job at pressing him because he said, I had no involvement. But then, as you saw, he contradicted, contradicted himself. And he said, um, you know, I got three texts and sent two texts, something to that effect. But you, you said you had no involvement. That right there, those texts, they are involvement. And the reporter pointed that out. And he didn't really know what to say because what could you say? Now, if you have been following the story, you'll notice that his story has changed. The goalpost has been moved. At first, he was trying to blame his chief of staff. Then he's saying, you know, oh, I had no involvement. I, I don't even know. Now he's playing dumb. I mean, he can't get his story straight. And just his, his whole demeanor there, it leads me to believe that this whole situation stinks. It smells a little bit foul. And there's a lot more that he's not telling us, right? So I'm glad that he would agree to, you know, uh, comply with the subpoena. Don't necessarily believe him, but I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. But there's one question that he asked here that really stood out to me. He said, what would you do if you got a call from the U.S. president's lawyer that wanted to get something to the vice president? Okay. That question is stripped of all context. We know the context. We don't have to remove the context from that hypothetical. We know that the US president's lawyers were trying to overturn the election specifically by using the vice president to not certify the results, to instead introduce a fake slate of, a slate of electors. And you knew that that was the case. Are you the one senator? Are you the one person all throughout the entire fucking planet who didn't know that that's what Trump was trying to do? Are you serious? But no, he didn't know, guys. He was completely ignorant. 
hilarious. So like it or not, he's implicated. And let me just remind you why he's in hot water to begin with. As John Nichols explained in an article for The Nation published over the summer, the Johnson aide indicated that the senator... Keyword, the senator was interested in delivering to the vice president who would preside over the proceedings alternative lists of electors from the battleground states of Wisconsin and Michigan. The fake electors were pledged to Trump, who lost the popular vote by more than 7 million ballots nationwide and who lost Wisconsin, Michigan and three other states that had voted for the Republican four years earlier. During the committee's fourth session, we learned that around noon on January 6th, Johnson aide Sean Riley sent a text message to Craig Hodgson a top staffer for Pence, in which Riley said Johnson needs to hand something to V. POTUS. Please advise. What is it? Asked Hodgson. Riley replied, alternate slate of electors from Michigan and Wisconsin because archivist didn't receive them. Quote, do not give that to him. The Pence aide responded. So the question is, why would the aides to the vice president know that this is not something that's acceptable, but Ron Johnson's chief of staff didn't know this? Was the chief of staff for Ron Johnson acting on his own volition? Was he instructed by Ron Johnson? These are questions that we don't know. And because there's so many unanswered questions, of course, this goes without saying, there should be a thorough investigation into Ron Johnson. He absolutely should be obligated to testify before the January 6th committee. And at a minimum, he should lose his seat. In the Senate, he should not be a U.S. senator if he is a threat to democracy, if he tried to overturn a Democratic U.S. presidential election. That should not be a thing that happens. The problem is that Americans have a very short memory. And now, according to an impact research poll, Ron Johnson is now leading after trailing his Democrat opponent, Mandela Barnes, all summer. Now, Ron Johnson is leading by five points. So not only is he leading by five points, but he might get away with trying to help in participating in the demise of democracy in the U.S. Now, again, we don't know the extent to which he was involved. We just know that he was implicated. We don't know the level of culpability there, but there should be an investigation to get to the bottom of it. But regardless, in this moment, we don't have many details, but yet people in Wisconsin, they're like, "Mm, sure, maybe we'll vote for him again. I mean, how long are your memories, folks. I mean, Jesus Christ, in instances like this, you have to place some blame on voters for not being informed enough. If you knowingly vote for a politician who is implicated in trying to overturn the results of an election, you've got to own that. Sure, you can chalk it up to them being misinformed and misled, but still, we're adults, and we know that Ron Johnson, however minimal it may be, was at least partially implicated In this scheme to overturn the election, if you vote for that, you're voting for the downfall of democracy. Sorry, but you are. You deserve blame for this as well if you are a voter in this state. So that's where we're at. Ron Johnson, even though nothing's going to happen to him, he's not going to see a single day in jail. He's not going to face any accountability, legally speaking, most likely because of this. He's still squirming. And at a minimum, I've said this about Trump, too. Even if I don't expect any legal accountability or much legal accountability, it's still nice to see these politicians shit themselves, wondering if they will indeed be held accountable. They probably won't, but I like to watch them squirm anyway. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.